we're here to talk about occupational hygiene, that is workplace health and safety, and how it had some of its mining, uh, his, has some of its history in mining exposures. And that's because miners worked in some of the most adverse environments with very limited ventilation and often in the presence of toxic substances. And in fact, what these workers used to do is they would bring canaries down with them to the shaft, which acted as uh, indicators of hazardous exposures. And if the bird fell ill, then the miners took that as a cue to evacuate. Now, health and safety in mining has really come a long way and improved dramatically since those ancient times. And uh, what we now know that is that the occupation is not any less hazardous than before. Um, because people are still drilling hundreds of feet deep underground, requiring powerful ventilation to bring in adequate fresh air. In my project, I looked at 12 different mining job groups with uh, 100 air samples, and I was looking for diesel particulate, which is emitted from underground vehicles, and silica, which is released from crushing granite rock. And both of these substances are carcinogens. And what I found was that the concentrations are about 50% the exposure limit, um, so that's pretty good. It seems like uh, none of the job groups were overexposed to diesel or silica. But these, in the standards that I compare them to, um, they've never said anything about whether uh, silica and diesel acted together to create a more severe effect on the human body than either substance on its own. Which is important to consider because these are carcinogens and they affect the same area of the lung. So I redid my calculations and what I found was a little bit more alarming. And now six out of the 12 job groups could be potentially overexposed with the other two dangerously reaching the limit. So that's the caveat, whether you're in the US, the UK, or in Canada, is that exposure regulations tend to be very substance specific, with no clear indication of when additive effects should be considered. So then it's up to the health and safety professionals to take a really conservative approach to exposure monitoring and to uh, think critically about the comparison of the regulatory standards that you're using. Uh, we know that things like cancer and pulmonary illnesses are chronic diseases. They don't happen overnight, and so it's important to now be, be even more critical, uh, apply more critical thinking about the potential additive effects. And of course, in occupational hygiene, we aim for prevention, and we certainly don't want to treat our workers like canaries. Thank you.